Civilization V is the greatest strategy game of all time. It's destroyed friendships and turned Gandhi into a nuclear war criminal. But today, I'm going to see if this game is a perfectly balanced game with no exploits, or if perhaps the developers of this classic game have accidentally created some stupidly overpowered features. Today, we're going to be doing the slowest game of Civ V possible, a marathon game of Civ V. It's 200% longer, that's right, instead of 500 turns, the game is going to last 1,500. So grab yourself an industrial sized bag of Yorkshire tea as I'm about to show you how to go fast in a world that moves slow. Today we're going to be playing as Song Hai, whose special ability allows them to get way more money from pillaging barb camps. In a normal game of Civ, this ability isn't very good. But in a marathon game of Civ, thanks to some massive oversights of the developers, this ability is insane. So let's dive into the game. So, welcome to the game, ladies and gentlemen. It's a marathon game, so it's going to take a long while, but here we are. We are off to a pretty decent start, ladies and gentlemen, even though it's a marathon game, because our lovely capital city here has spawned with citrus and cows, and those extra food deals mean that we can get, potentially, a second population in just 15 turns. Oh my god. Of course, it's still going to take us 30 turns to train a warrior, but that's fine. We, we don't need warriors. It's okay. Uh, although we do, because our entire build for this game is going to be be about spamming warriors out. Because you see, there's something very special about Civ 5 and Barbarians. And that is that despite the fact that we're on the marathon game speed, where everything in the game is slowed down, including your production and your growth and your science, one thing wasn't slowed down. And that is the spawn rate of Barbarian encampments. That's right. Because whilst it takes 30 turns to build a warrior, it only takes 5 turns for a Barbarian camp to spawn in. And they are spawning constantly and everywhere. Now what this normally means for most people playing a marathon game of Civ 5 is that the early game is basically a survival apocalypse simulator, but for us it is a potential source of infinite money. Anyway, our first goody hut has yielded us mining. This is, of course, completely and utterly useless. Yep, there is literally nothing we can do for it except maybe improve this gold tile, but we won't be improving that gold tile for a very long while. It takes 53 turns to build a worker. I'm sorry, gold tile. You can just bugger off, my friend. Anyway, we've now just cleared our first barbarian encampment out. Lovely stuff. And we're bam, we're going to get 225 gold. Now, we can't do much with 225 gold. We can't build or buy anything. A settler is 1,000 gold. And heck, even buying a tile can send you back anywhere from 150 to 345. Oh god, Civ. Well, that's fine. We don't need to worry about any of that. Oh, we've just discovered the borders of a city-state here. This is fantastic. An early city-state friend is very good because they grant you money. That's right. Being the first person to discover a city-state, that's first gold. Goodness, and we're one turn away from getting our second pop in our capital city. That's right, turn 15. We're gonna have two population, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> now with that second population in, potentially I can convince the city to build us this lovely warrior even faster. Yes, we've got it down to just 10 turns. 10 turns for this next warrior. Lovely. Oh, and we just revealed the location of nearby barbarian encampments from a ruin. Now, normally if you're playing Civ, this is terrible. But for us, this is fantastic. That means there's 200 gold here, 200 gold here, and 200 gold here. This is good news. So we can just make our way over to it and we're going to clear it out for all of that lovely money. Oh, we've discovered our first AI friend, the Ottomans. They are evidently somewhere up to our north. That's good to know. And we're going to start clearing out our lovely second barb camp. We've also managed to discover archery, which is very important, meaning next turn when we finish this warrior, we can get an archer into production. Archers are much better at clearing barb camps than warriors are because of their lovely damage bonus. Next up in terms of research, we're going to want to probably start researching pottery, a process that is going to take us 21 turns to do. Oh god, why is the game so slow? Anyway, that's barb camp number two cleared, that's another 225 gold, bring us up to 583. And oh, would you look at that, there's the barb camp. Lovely stuff. Can we purchase anything? Yes, we could buy ourselves a scout, a warrior, or an archer. Not really too sure if it would be worth getting this many out so soon, but actually, screw it, yes, let's get ourselves another archer out. We'll send this archer up north, this warrior is going to go and 
clear this bob camp and this one and this warrior can clear this bob camp so it should all work out nicely oh it looks like we've also got another civilization just here south of cape town and from the color of the borders that looks like egypt to me which is fine egypt is a decent neighbor to have mostly because as they're so close to our capital i reckon we can probably murder them nice and soon and that's another bob camp killed for us so 375 gold oh we've discovered ethiopia lovely oh that's another bob camp fantastic our archer can now get to work farming up some experience by plinking away at this dude and there we go the archer has actually just cleared that entire bob camp out for us so we can just send in the archer they'll capture it that's another 225 gold we're up to 600 gold now this is very very good indeed it might be worth actually getting out an early monument or potentially another early settler because of course the ai is also on the same time constraints as we are so getting some additional cities out early could be very very beneficial indeed anyway we're going to steal this barb camp here for 225 gold now we're up to 873 i think yes it's time we get ourselves a monument for this additional culture now here's the thing i could try and build a settler but this process would take 40 turns and whilst it's activated the city of goa simply won't grow which is really really detrimental so instead i'm going to once again just build more archers our capital city is just going to be spamming out as many archers as possible and we've discovered a new barb camp there's one down to our south over here fantastic i imagine that's bucharest's mission yes it is right lovely we'll go send some archers over to deal with that and there's a goody hut over here what do we get a lost population oh my goodness that's free pop in our capital city now oh yes that's very good indeed oh and there's another barbarian encampment discovered it's just spawned in lovely so we're gonna send this warrior up to deal with this barb camp this archer down to deal with this barb camp and this warrior over to deal with this barb camp honestly the spawn rate of barb encampments it is downright ludicrous but it is fantastic for us oh and who would have guessed it's another barb encampment up here my goodness thank you game and now this barb encampment does come with archers which are extra spooky but don't worry ladies and gentlemen we're ready for them oh my goodness and i've just walked into yet another barb camp i'm not after this barb camp i'm after this one over here barb camps please can you just chill the spawn rate for just a little while anyway our rangers are now just going to start wailing in on these barbarian brutes farming some lovely experience we're going to make our way over to this barb encampment oh fantastic we can adopt our first policy this is lovely we're going to go for honor here now honor is very important for us because it's going to give us a plus 33 percent combat bonus versus barbarians and we're also going to get notifications of whenever a new barbarian encampment spawns in any revealed territory which means we will start knowing where barbarian encampments are very easily oh and we can immediately tell there's one to the right of our capital and one over here to the left of cape town fantastic and that additional combat strength versus barbarians very very good indeed anyway we're going to clear out this barb encampment for 225 gold clear out this barb encampment for another 225 gold and then we're going to get to work on this one over here for the city state oh another barbarian encampment has just spawned in over here lovely we can send the northern archer down to deal with that meanwhile we're going to clear out this barbarian encampment and that will make us friends with bucharest which is going to double our culture production this is very very important indeed becoming friends with city states is a fantastic way to grow especially on these incredibly slow speeds we're also pulling close to the wonderful 1000 gold necessary to settle a second city oh another barb encampment has spawned oh and it spawned right next to one of our archers lovely we'll deal with that that's an extra money we're going to get 225 from this barb camp and we're immediately going to purchase ourselves a glorious settler fantastic so a settler is out this is definitely going to be a lot faster than any of the other AIs in the game, which gives us a very decent advantage indeed. Right, it's turn 69, which means I have to do something very naughty. That's right, I'm going to borrow this uh, lovely player's worker here. Yep, I'm going to go to war with Egypt just for the sake of stealing their worker, and then we're just going to run away with it because I know that the AI can't really deal with what we've just done here. Uh, it, it just isn't built for it, especially considering I have a lot more troops than they do, which means that they should be pressured into peace with relative ease. Now, with a spare 1,000 and 400 gold lying around i'm actually going to buy myself a settler and i'm going to do something very very cheeky i'm going to settle a city probably around about right here really close to febbers and this is of course going to massively annoy the ai but there is genuinely absolutely nothing they can do okay now egypt wants peace for 30 turns this is quite an interesting proposal and i will actually accept it because i'm going to basically be blocking them in with my next city and we've discovered a new barbarian encampment it is of course spawned right next to our capital city and and we can capture that settler lovely now if we keep it we keep it as a worker or if we return it to the ottomans they'll be very grateful of course i'm just going to take it because well it's mine we're ready to settle ourselves our third city now in a very very aggressive location but it matters little this is my city spot and we can just immediately send our lovely worker off to just go and generally improve our empire
Empire. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I've just spoken to the boffins at Spiffco, and apparently we have so much gold lying around, we're just gonna have to give it away for free. So the first 6,000 people who like this video are going to receive their very own piece of barbarian gold. It may or may not be coated in blood, but that's no concern of yours. Just don't lick the gold, but hey, it's yours to enjoy. Alright, it's turn 85, and uh, we've got three cities out with a grand total population of seven people in our empire. Oh my goodness, we are huge. <laughs> Something tells me I'm not going to be hitting the uh, 100 sides by turn 100 that lots of us Civ players like to aim for. Anyway, that's another barb camp cleared, so that's lovely stuff, and that's going to really make Sidon happy with us. And also pick up another policy. I'm going to pick up citizenship because decreasing the amount of time it takes a worker to improve a tile is huge. It could take a worker about 15 turns to do anything, and I mean, look at this. 19 turns to construct a pasture. I do not want to spend 19 turns constructing a pasture game. And we're now also doing really, really good in terms of our actual financial situation. 1,000 gold in the bank, and next turn it's going to be around about 1,400. So we're going to pick up this bad boy, that's 200 gold, and we're going to pick up this bad boy, that's another 200 gold. And we just got ourselves an achievement. Here ends the Noble Savage, an achievement entirely based around murdering barb camps, which surprisingly, we've done a decent amount of. And another barb camp has spawned in next to our capital, lovely stuff. It's going to be decent amounts of farming. But I will start moving some of my troops closer towards Thebes because I think it is probably time as soon as we get ourselves either composite bowmen or catapults for us to go to war and start burning the city down. And in 35 turns we will get ourselves a catapult which is very very good indeed. Right welcome back it's turn 115 and we finally have ourselves a pantheon. Now I'm going to pick the sun god bonus so that way we get extra food from banana, citrus and wheat resources and as we have a lot of citrus and some bananas this is very very beneficial indeed. Bam that's our lovely pantheon. Look at these lovely citrus tiles and this glorious banana. Now we are almost halfway into building the Temple of Artemis and it still has 33 turns remaining and I've just realized that imagine if an AI beats me to finishing the Temple of Artemis. I've spent over 40 turns building this bastard and it's entirely possible that an AI is just gonna go nope it's mine now and there is literally nothing I can do to stop them. Now you might notice I also have a lot more units than previously expected. This is because the lovely Sidon here has been handing me military units units near constantly and in fact I'm going to give them some money I'm going to give them 250 gold and also pledge to protect them this is because hopefully they're just going to keep handing me units and the 250 gold spent will cover any cost of units that they actually give us considering it costs us 460 to build an archer and they've given me two archers I think it's definitely going to be worth it oh now lovely the Iroquois here want to pay me a huge amount of gold they want to give me 375 gold and then free gold over the next 90 turns for one of our lovely citruses this in my opinion is a great deal. Thank you very much, Iroquois. This is a lot of money. And in six turns, we're going to finally have ourselves some catapults ready. And with that, we can finally knock out the Egyptians from the game and steal their very nice looking capital city. All right, next turn, we're going to discover ourselves some lovely mathematics. And with that, we should be ready to start mashing out Fabes. Oh, and we've also just entered the classical era. Lovely. And we did get to build the Temple of Artemis. Oh, that's glorious. So that 15% production decrease on range units is great. Sadly, it doesn't lower the mounted costs us to actually buy them which is a shame but that's okay anyway for 890 we can buy ourselves a catapult which is exactly what we're going to do well bam that is one lovely catapult i also probably want to get the statue of zeus up for that extra plus 15 percent when attacking cities this is going to be really really beneficial but most importantly i'm going to steal this settler from egypt so i'm going to put all of my units in a nice circle around egypt and we should be able to yoink their brand new creation out of thin air oh and it's looking like they're getting ready to try and move this settler out to the right which is fantastic because we can just quite simply block it in with some archers and we'll have that bad boy massacred in no time at the same time i think i might pick up two catapults just in case i think the more catapults the merrier oh it looks like egypt is a bit confused they think it's come to my attention you have a large number of units near my borders so i request that you move them away but no you're right and it's time for you to die egypt anyway with this we can start range bombarding their city but most importantly we can steal this settler of theirs which they're trying to actually run away. Nope, I would like that worker as it's going to help improve this city for me. And fantastic, in half a turn we've managed to really get Phoebes down to a very low, low level. Right, we're getting ready to murder Phoebes and just as another buff camp spawns in behind the city. Of course it does, of course. Oh, this game. Anyway, Phoebes is now looking really nice and weakened so we can just attack on in. And we're bam, the city is ours. We've pillaged 282 gold from it and we're going to annex the bastard. And we're going to create ourselves a lovely puppet city-state for ourselves. But hey, this is fantastic. We now control one of the AI capitals in the game and another little barb camp has opened up.
lined up for us to murder. The big question is who do we then kill next? And I think we have to go for the next best player, which of course is going to be Greece. These bad boys have actually got way more science than me, which means that their cities produce science. And consequently, we could get technologies for murdering them. And I think it's time that we march our huge invasion force right up to the Greek AI. And we've also just been able to start building the Statue of Zeus, so that's exactly what we're going to switch our capital city to building. Statue of Zeus here is going to really, really hand us the game. Anyway, let's move an archer around. We're doing a great job of scouting out some of these Ethiopian military positions. And we're just going to attack the city from multiple sides of our lovely catapults. Oh my goodness, we've just got our first great person. Yes, it's a great general, right? Send them straight up to the front line. A great general will do a fantastic job of boosting all of the combat effectiveness of our nearby units, making the invasion all the more easier. And anyway, we're going to say that we're not ready to actually attack Ethiopia, even though they hate us, they don't trust us, they know we're going to probably invade them, but that doesn't really make a difference, because in this game mode, it of course takes forever to build a military unit, so they're not going to be able to get one online in time. Okay, and I think we've everyone here and ready, I think it's time for us to murder them. Of course, they denounced us, which is very, very mean. We do get one gold per turn from them, but uh, it doesn't really make much of a difference in the long run. It's time for us to mass murder them. Our catapult will immediately evaporate about a fifth of their city, they're down to about half strength on their city now. Well, they have been able to somehow rush out a archer, which is really good for them because they're going to be able to do a huge amount of damage. But luckily, I think I should be able to topple the walls of Addis Ababa this turn. So yep, yeah, if I just plink it up a little bit and rush on in with this warrior, we should be able to easily get it next turn guaranteed. And fantastic, Addis Ababa is about to fall, ladies and gentlemen. A glory city it might be, yes, but it is now mine. Goodbye, Ethiopia. We will once again create a glorious puppet city, and hopefully they will actually improve some of these lovely resources they've got around them. But hey, our science is doing a bit better. We're up to 18 science per turn now, and we've just been denounced by our friends in the Iroquois. Okay, they were not a fan of us murdering people. All right, I think it's probably time for us to also try and take out the city of Corinth. So, uh, yep, now is the time for war. We're going to very simply just declare war, whacking a giant rock into their capital city. We're also going to be able to just steal some of their workers here. Lots of really great additional workers to be had here as well for us. We'll also be able to hopefully take out an entire archer unit of theirs, which would be fantastic. Anyway, the city should hopefully fall next turn. So that's one plink on the wall. That's another plink on the wall. In we can send a lovely melee unit and we'll bam, the city is ours. Now we can raise the city or we can create a puppet state or we could just annex it entirely. And I think another puppet city is necessary and we can spend the next 31 turns building a chocolate plantation here. My goodness, wow. Oh, it takes so long to do these improvements. I think it's time we build a library in our capital. Plus one science for every two citizens here. That's an extra plus free science. Now, sadly, the unhappiness modifier is going to massively slow down the pop growth in our empire, but it matters little. We're able to get ourselves up a lovely library in our capital. None of our cities are now able to grow, but it's okay. We don't need growth. We need the death of the Greeks. And with their death, we will gain their lovely chocolate. Athens is a much stronger city than most of the ones we've actually been fighting, but it matters little. For using a huge volley of archers, we're going to be able to tear down these walls. For an another ranged attack, oh, and it's looking exceedingly weak. I'm going to give this lovely catapult volley so that it's even stronger against cities, and that will be enough to tear down these walls. And we'll bam, Athens is mine. Anyway, fantastic. We've eliminated three AIs from the game. I think that means there are now just two AIs remaining. Yep, it's just the Ottomans and the Iroquois, both of whom uh, don't exactly hate me. They're guarded towards me. But hey, we now have a lot more cities, and these cities will help us grow and prosper. Lovely. All right, it's turn 200, and the year is 1500 BC, and, well, things are looking good. The AI has now got composite bowmen, uh, so that is, of course, not quite as good as I'd like, but it's okay. We're still making decent money, and I think I really want to try and annoy the Ottoman AI here and just set them back a bit. And I think the best way to do that is for me to raise their city to the ground, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quite simply set Edarine here on fire, and I think that should solve a decent amount of our problems. Oh, and we've now finally completed the Statue of Zeus, which is wonderful, which now means we get a plus 15% when actually attacking cities. This, of course, includes our glorious catapults here, so I think we are probably ready for a very nice little bit of a conquest. So it's time for us to go to war as a worker has just wandered directly into our pathway here, so you know what that means. Wabam, it's wartime. Wait, hang on a second. Oh, we just attacked the worker. We didn't actually take it. Well, that's my bad. Into the city we go. We're going to set up our catapults this turn so that they're ready to attack. We can then also mash up their one warrior unit they have here and shoot up one of their scouts. Lovely. And their city chooses to bombard my chariot archer instead of actually fighting me, which is great because these catapults can near two hit the city. I mean, just look at this. 
this. Wabam, 108 damage. Don't mind if I do. All we now need to do is get a single warrior in and then we've won. So I guess that's just exactly what we do. And Wabam will bombard the city, bombard this warrior, blow up the city and take it. And instead of actually keeping it, we're just going to raise it to the ground. This will give us six temporary unhappiness, but that's okay. It will deteriorate over time. And I think we should be able to secure a very, very favorable peace deal now from the Ottomans. And there we go. Their city is just being raised to the ground. Oh God. Well, Istanbul, how would you like peace? You know, I think we can actually just go for the fastest domination victory I think the world's ever seen. So why not? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's go bombard and destroy Istanbul in as fast a speed as possible. Now is the time for Istanbul to fall. Wabam, the walls are looking weak and we can send in our lovely warrior and wabam, attack it anyway, it's mine. And we'll have to create ourselves a lovely puppet city. With this, I don't think the Ottomans want to attack anymore, so I think securing peace with them is a decent idea as we now hold their capital. So we'll negotiate some peace. I'll ask him to throw in some sugar and some gold. And so we're bam, we now have peace. Lovely. So we control the most capitals in the world. Now there is only one capital city left remaining. Right, next turn, I think it is time for us to go to war with the final non-murdered AI in the game. So it's time for us to march in our lovely glorious catapults and go to war for the final bit of territory I don't quite yet control. This territory surprisingly looks really, really rather empty, to be fair. I was genuinely expecting a lot more in in terms of actual units from the AI, but that's fine. I'll also annex the main city of Istanbul here so that potentially I can start buying stuff from here if needed. But I imagine this invasion is going to be relatively easy, especially considering that my catapults can do 57 damage to the city. So we're bound, we're just gonna waltz our way on in, march our lovely warrior so that next turn we can invade it. And then I think we should be ready for one of the fastest conquest victories civilization has ever seen. So plink the city, plink the city, Plink the city and wabam. I don't care that this isn't the opportune move, advisor, that you say isn't okay. Yes, it is. It's mine and I win. Ladies and gentlemen, there we go. That's got to be an incredibly fast conquest victory. It's only 1170 BC. Turn 233 of a 1500 turn game. But no, we just shredded the AI with our glorious triumph. Demographics wise, you know, we weren't the most approved leader. Most people didn't like us, but that doesn't matter because our empire was glorious. We can even watch a replay of graphs. Look at this score graph. It's me. Look at my total gold graph throughout the game. <laughs> goodness. This is just downright ridiculous. You could see basically when we declared war on the AI because the turn after they would just buy a unit. Oh dear oh dear. But we truly did smash them around. Those barbarian camps are just downright ridiculous. Here's of course the unhappiness graph. We uh, we peaked at 64 unhappiness there right at the end of the game which is insane. But hey that was just 233 turns. This game could have lasted 1500 turns. Imagine reaching that point and then going you know what I spent 20 hours playing this game of civilization. I'd like just one more turn. <laughs> now to put this into perspective, we've managed to win this game in just 233 turns, which is 15% of this entire long form game. To put this into comparison, if we'd been playing on online speed, which is just 250 turns, that's similar to winning a conquest victory on turn 37, which is absolutely absurd. Or if we were playing on standard speed, that's on par with winning a conquest victory by turn 75. Now that's perfectly bad. Balanced. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the absolutely perfectly balanced and 100% not broken way of playing civilization by choosing the exploit that on marathon speed, barbarian camps continue spawning at absurd rates, meaning that any faction that benefits from murdering barb camps is going to snowball out of control. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit, and this has been a perfectly balanced way of playing Civilization V, one of my favorite strategy games. If you like what you've seen, here today then make sure to subscribe to the channel and why not consider giving this video a like. Anyway as always a massive thank you to each and every one of these amazing lovely people here who fund our glorious channel and make everything all the more possible. Thank you very much you silly sausages. And hey if you sat there wondering what to watch next look no further than this one on screen now. Anyway see you in the next one. Goodbye.